I have to record this period. So we're starting to record, so no more swearing like you guys always do. I'm just yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, I forgot to hit record last period, so so you guys get to be the ones who are recorded. All right. Yes, you are. Um, before I hand out um, stuff for our notes, um, so our quiz grades are in. Uh, I'll let you check on your phones in a few minutes. So I want to talk to you all about this real quick. I, and I just had put your, I had put your uh, quiz grades in this morning, right before or during first period. Um, I had a student ask me, and this has come up a few times, and I just want to reemphasize. Okay, you have a handful of categories in the grade book. Have we put anything in for the final exam at this point? No. This counts for 15% of your semester grade. Okay? So a student said to me, th this is the comment, I keep doing my homework, but my grade hasn't changed. And that's correct. It, the thing is, this area right here, whether it has one homework assignment or 10,000, is the same size area no matter what. So let's say you're doing, you've done all of your homework assignments. The nice thing about doing all your homework assignments is that's worth 25% of your grade. So if you look at your grade, your grade with all of these dots being homework assignments is accounting for 25% of what your grade is at this point in time. So if you've done all of your homework assignments, gotten fours on all of them, your grade kind of remains constant. Now, where it changes is if you are the kid that forgot to do that one, and these three you didn't think were that important, and you have zeros in there, or twos, then this person's grade will influence. Not to get as well as this, but what will happen is, let's say, let's say you have 100% of your homework assignments in, but the person who sits next to you has only 92% of their stuff in. Well, this person's grade will continue to climb if they keep doing the homework. Let's say both of those students have an 80% test quiz average. Who has the lower grade in the class? The student with 100% of the homework in, getting a four on everything, or the student with the 92% of the homework assignments? 92. Yeah. So this student here, this student here probably has like an 84%. This student here would probably have like an 82%. Though that 82% will influence a little bit each time they start getting on the better habit of doing homeworks, they will not reach this. You know, this person might have like an 82.1, they do another assignment, doesn't change, do another one, and then it goes up to like an 82.2. This grade is not as good as this grade. So if you are choosing to uh, do all your homeworks, cool, your grade isn't influencing too much. It's when you stop doing your homework that you're going to start seeing it go down, and then if you start doing it again, it starts going back up, but it can't get back up to where it should have been originally. Um, the other thing that students ask is, what do I need to get on the final in order to get this particular grade? The final is worth 15% of your overall grade. Let's say you are going into the final exam and you have an 87% in the class. In order for this 87% to get to an A, you need to score 107% on the final exam. Guess what you're not getting in this class? 100. Right. We don't offer extra credit. You're not earning 107% on the final. Okay? So. This student who's got an 87% going into the final really should anticipate earning the B for the semester grade. Oh, that's not fair. No, that's how math works. Okay? It doesn't, you know, you can't do 87% of the work and expect at the very end that, oh, look, now I'm going to get it better. Okay? Though if you got 100% on the final, I'm proud of you and good job, but that might move you up to like an 80 9.1%. Doesn't that round up? No. Well, why not? Because it doesn't work that way. OK? 
Okay? So, this student who is here shouldn't study to try and get the 100% on the final. This student should probably study to get like an 80% on the final exam test. Is that a different type of studying than trying to study to get 100%? Yeah. What does that mean? Three to four hours is opened up for other things to study for. Okay? So, um, the test or the quizzes they are in, they looked pretty good. Um, tomorrow, if you did not take the test or the quiz, I would like to do two things tomorrow. One, I will hand back your quizzes. If you were not here to take the quiz, you are going to take it during the class. Okay? Make sense? That gives you a, a walking quiz or whatever. So if you would like to log on your phones, you have about three minutes to log on and check your grade. Unless you grade it on Snapchat. No. And coming out to you is going to be notes for today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, fine. fine, I don't need to take it. Taking this class, it was. Seven A's on the test. Three of those were perfect scores, so good job. Every time I'm so close to making one of that perfect score. Yes, baby. Yes, it is. Okay, about 30 seconds left with the phones. I can't help you on that. I don't know. All right. So here's our countdown. Ready? There you go. Good. All right. So let's talk about linear inequalities. Linear inequalities. Okay. So we talked about these in the beginning of the school year, just as inequalities, where you had greater than, less than, correct? And then you had greater than or equal to and less than or equal to, where this would have meant, if you're using this, you were to use parentheses. With the square brackets, you would use square bracket could be like that, or it could go into infinity like that. Okay? This is an open dot. This is a solid dot. Remember those terms? So now we're going to start talking about what it means when you talk about with the xy axis. So you have a, a, a line that you've drawn. And then how do we account for that? So some of this will be a review. Uh, let's see. Oh, other things to know. So Monday and Tuesday, we will finish up this chapter. Wednesday, we have review and take-home test. Take-home test. And then Thursday, we have our actual test. So we only had one unit left to cover. I'm glad we got a quiz in. OK? So that's, what we, that's what's this week. And then Friday, we start with new stuff. Just to get away from rumors, yes, we have school next week. It's the following week that's our fall break. Right? So, some people find it like, wait, well, I don't understand how. But, but Douglas County is on break right now. I know. We're not Douglas County. Yes. Yes. Yes.
Yes. Yeah. What on the next one? It's a college readiness day. Three three PSATs, SATs, things like that. Different depending on what level they are. There'll be stuff on all the walls of where you would go. So students, the ninth graders, these are your last names. You go to this one. Might as well have you take every opportunity we give you. It's, I'd say it's not a state testing day. It's actually for the PSAT or the pre pre SAT, which those are the tests that count. So I would, I would, in my opinion, I'd say these are. Those are not the ones. It's not that silly state mandated test you get up there. Like this. So I would say be here for those. But if you hear differently, then. With that. All right, um, let's move up a little bit. All right, so these are our old school. So how do I graph this equation? What's the first thing? Go to negative three. Yeah, go to negative three in the y direction. So one, two, three. And this is what we've done all along. And then you have this as our slope. So I'm going to go up one, right two. And this is just review, right? This is what I quizzed you on. And then the second problem here, uh, the cover method works really well. So you have 0, comma blank and blank, comma 0. And some of you still struggle with this. This is an x value, so that means this is gone. So you have negative 6 times y equals 6. So that means negative 1 is going to work. So 0, negative 1, put one there. And then this is a y value, yes. So that means that whole thing becomes zero. So you get three times x equals six. So three times what number is six? Okay. So this is just review of what we've already done. Yes. It's an equal sign. Can I move on? Can I move on? All right. So. If you remember these inequalities, like this problem here, you subtract 6 from both sides. You get 2x is greater than 6 because 12 minus 6 is 6. Find each side by 2, so we find that x is greater than 3. So if you put it on a number line, you'd have an open dot at 3 shading this way. Bless you. If you wanted to put it in interval notation, that would mean that you go from rounded bracket 3 to infinity. Why was it a rounded bracket? Because it's an open dot, so it doesn't have the equal sign as well. Okay, so that's your interval notation. So that's that's where we're, you know, that's like a few weeks ago in the beginning of the school year old. All right? Do you recall that? All right, next one. Uh, what about if I had 2x? plus 6y is greater than 12. So this would could get graphed onto an xy axis. Okay, So you might come across something where it says, hey, we want to know if this point is a solution to our problem. So on that point, this is an x and this is a y value. So my x value goes in right there. My y value goes in right there. So I get 2 times 0 plus 6 times 1. Is that greater than 12? Well, 2 times 0 is 0. And then plus 6 is 0 added to 6 greater than 12. Is 6 greater than 12? Is that true or false? False. That's false. So is 0, comma 1 a solution to this problem? Nope. 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 Is that all right? Feeling good? Yeah. So that might be something that we will start going with on the you might say, hey, is this point a solution on the problem? If it gives you a false statement, it is not. If it gives you a true statement, it is. Yeah. Uh, there's some video. I tried the video. It doesn't work. No. What is the video? It's that glade. Plug it in. Plug it in. I'm not, I'm not that fun guy. Uh, one thing I want you to do on this equation right here. Let's change this sign to this direction. That way it matches 
what was on the original. Is that okay? You okay so far? Yeah. So I just want you to change that inequality sign, make it greater than versus less than. Okay, this is going to work by using the cover method. Okay, so I'm going to find, so this is set up in standard form. So I'm going to use my point 0, comma blank and blank, comma 0. So let's run through this real quick. This was an x value. So 2 times x is 0, so that's going to be 0. So I have 6 times y equals 12. So 6 times what number gives me 12? 2. Two. So 0, comma 2 is right there. Okay? And then this is a y value, right? So 6 times 0 is 0. So this is going to give me 2x plus 0. So it's 2x. 2x equals 12. So 2 times what number gives me 12? 2 times what number gives me 12? All right, now, it's going to be a dotted line. And the reason it's dotted is if you have this or this, that gives you dotted. If you have this or this, this gives you solid. So dotted is those. So this is a dotted line looks like this. Okay? You can make it a dash if you need to, but... All right, so once you... Figure that is where is a good test point. Now, I like going simple. Some people are like, yeah, let's pick the point 2.568372, comma, 154,281.613. Not really the best test point. You want to know what a really awesome test point is? If this doesn't go through the x, y axis at the origin, 0, comma 0 is a really good test point. Okay? Now, I want you to figure this out and see this. This whole region up here is one side of the graph. This whole region down here is another side of the graph. Does everyone agree that 0, comma 0 is on the bottom side of the graph? Okay? So if I plug 0, 0 in and it gives me a true statement, that means I have to shade everything down here. If I plug 0, 0 in, it gives me a false statement. I have to shade everything on the other side of where 0, 0 would take place. Okay? All right, so let's take 0, 0 and plug it into our original. So I have 2x plus 6y is greater than 12. I'm going to try 0, 0, 0, see if it works. So 2 times 0 plus 6 times 0, is that greater than 12? Is 0 greater than 12? No. That's false. So you need to shade the opposite side. So down here, that gave me a false. So that means if I pick anything down there, it gives me false. If I pick anything up here, it gives me true. So you want to know what who the irritating student is? It's the one who shades this when you're during a test, and all you hear them doing is just coloring with about 60 different grayscales of their graphite pencil. To shade this region. And you know what usually happens once they've spent the majority of the period doing this? They're the kid whose eraser is all the way down to the metal part of the pencil on their knee. Yeah. But you know the kid I'm talking about? So they've spent all, this is what you usually hear during the test. And you're testing and you're just like, what in the heck is the person next to me doing? <laughs> and you're sitting there going, <coughs> okay, I'll wait till they're done. <laughs> and then usually you hear this. Oh, shoot. They start to erase. And their eraser, again, is the old wooden pencil, and their, their eraser is all the way down to the metal part. You know what the eraser sounds like as it cuts through the no. paper? And it's like, oh! And you're looking at the person going, I'm going to throw a desk at you because this is irritating me. So, so honestly, <coughs> my feeling is 
the best way to shade these is don't spend half the period shading it. Just do it. Bam. Look how easy that is. I love it. Don't be the one who's colored in every nook and cranny thinking you're going to gain extra points from me. Because I tell you, when I start grading a test and I see an eraser mark and I see that it ripped the paper, you know what I hear? I hear that metal. Oh, it's just like, oh, oh. All right, let's move on to the next problem. So this is set up in slope-intercept form, agree? So what would my y-intercept be on this problem? Negative 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2. That's 0, negative 5, yes? And then my slope is right there, right? So from here I'm going to go up to right 1. Is this a solid or a dotted line? Solid. It's solid because you have the equal thing. So... Does zero, 0, appear to be a really good test point up here? Yeah, no. It is a good test point because the line didn't go right through it. Does everyone agree that zero, 0, is indeed on one side of this line? I mean, this whole region over here is where zero, 0, lives, yes? This region over here is where it doesn't. So that's my test point. So I'm going to plug in my test point to see if I get a true statement, which would mean I'd shade the side that the zero, 0, is on or a false statement, which means I shade the opposite side of the line. So I'm going to take 0, 0, plug it in, see what we get. Uh, that's 0, right? So is 0 less than negative 5? Yes. Shocked it's false. Okay, so that means this is the region that we need to shade. Okay, we good? Yeah. We're gonna hit up on that. Good question. Yeah. It, if, if it gives you a false. If it gave you true, then you shade that side. Okay? All right. This appears to be cover method, yes? So I got 0, comma, blank, blank, comma, 0. This is an x value. So that means that's gone, right? That's all gone right there. So negative 4 times y equals 12. So negative 4 times what number gives me positive 12? Negative 4 times what number gives me negative or negative positive? Three. Negative, three. negative 3. So 0, negative 3. Is that okay? And then this is a y value, yes? So that means this whole part becomes 0. So 4 times what number gives me 12? 3. Solid or dotted? Does it appear 0, 0 is definitely on one side of the line? Yeah, 0, 0 is my test point. So we want to see if this works. Okay, so 4 times 0 is 0, minus 4 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 0 is 0, 0 greater than 12. No. That's false. So that means if I picked any ordered pair on this side, I'd get a false statement. So I'm going to shade the other side of the line. I picked anything down where I shaded that region, that means it would give me a true statement. Where the true statement would be. You only have to test to see if it's false. If it tends to be true, shade that side. If it's false, shade the opposite side of the line. So if it's true. If it's true, you shade that region. Yeah. Eventually I'll find you get one of these that's true. I think. Oh. Ooh, special case. This is a line. It is a straight line. What kind of straight line is this? Undefined. It's an undefined line, which means it's what kind of line? 
vertical, so I want to do the five. Okay, solid or dotted? Solid. So pick zero. Zero less than five, less than or equal to five. That's true, yes. So that means everything on this side gives this a true statement. Then you get the kid who starts erasing and they got speed up and <laughs> Am I the only person that picks up on these things? Alright, whoops. Hey, what kind of uh, straight line is that? Zero. So horizontal. Solid or dotted? Solid. Dotted. Dotted. Okay, so again, pick just zero, plug it in. Is zero greater than three? No. False, so shade the whole top region. Make sense? All right, can I do the last example? Actually, I have two more examples to do. One I have to make up. Ready? I don't know, can I? This one is set up in point slope form. So let's figure out our point. Our point is opposite here. Opposite here. What's the opposite there? Negative 4. And opposite here. What's that? Positive 2. So negative 4. Right there is my point. What's my slope? Half. So I'm going to go up 1, right 2. Is this solid or dotted? Solid. So you add the equal sign. Zero, zero seems to be a pretty good test point. So if I plug zero, zero into our, our original, zero minus two is greater than or equal to one half. Zero plus four. So negative two is greater than or equal to, what's zero plus four? Four. What's half of four? Two. Two. Is negative two greater than or equal to two? No. Nope. False. So shade up here. Cool. That's it. If I picked anything up there. The last thing I want to cover is what happens if my line goes right through 0, 0. Pick another point. So let's do that. So let's add this. Let's say I have y is less than negative x. OK. So this would be plus 0, so I have this. I'm going to go down 1, right 1, and this will be dotted. Agree? So what you want to do is you want to pick a test point. So I like to pick something that's on the x or the y axis then. Okay, I typically like to pick the simpler of the points. Okay, so that's an x and a y value. Plug it in. So I get 0 is less than negative 10. True or false? False. So that gives me this whole region is false over here, so I'm going to shade over here. And that's what you do in that scenario. Okay. I made up test points. I was just picking things on the x-axis or the y-axis. So any of these are good test points. One, usually one of those is going to work somehow. So because it's always easy to multiply by ten. Yeah. That's what you got. <laughs> Questions, <laughs> ladies and gents. So I need you to know that uh, I do care about you. All right, so I do, we are skipping a portion of our work, so 
we will skip to, I want you to work on tonight, and start on it now, page uh, 8182. So you have the opportunity, why don't you start this now, 